Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the Farm Kitchen. Today is going to be all about how to can tomatoes. So come along with us. We're going to show you all the stuff you need and tell you everything you need to know about how to can tomatoes for success for your family. Woo! Stony Ridge. Alright guys, welcome to Food Fridays here on the Stony Ridge Farm where we try to take you on the food adventure every Friday. This video is brought to you in part by shelving.com. That's where this awesome cart that we're using in the kitchen came from. I'll post a link down in the video description below and I'll post a coupon code if I can get it from shelving.com. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be canning tomatoes and this is proof positive. These are tomatoes that I canned gosh, at least four years ago, and they still look just as good and fresh as they did the day I canned them. We're gonna talk to you about all the materials we're gonna need first. First, you're gonna need tomatoes. Then you're gonna need pickling salt. All this stuff can be bought at your local big box store or your small mom and pop store, or even, I believe, Rural King Tractor Supply and other different places. You're gonna need a pressure canner and or a water bath canner. Now you can use a pressure canner as a water bath canner. You don't have to use it with pressure, okay? So we can use it without the lid right here and make a water bath canner. A water bath canner basically cans by boiling water. You just have your uh, vegetable, whatever it is that you're canning inside the pot and you boil it. Pretty simple. It heats it up and seals the lid right here. Now, these lids are designed really, really cool. They have a little rubber ring around them, okay? Let's go from start to finish. Well, you're gonna need. We're gonna set this over to the side. This is a vintage canner. This is the 16 quart Presto. Actually, this is the 12 quart Presto canner. I recommend the 16 or the 12 quart, or you can go as big as the 23 quart. There are weights on the top of this critter, and we'll talk a little bit more about those in just a minute. I'm gonna set this over to the side, and we're gonna go into some of the things that you need to know. So you've got two types of jars here. You've got a large mouth jar, and you've got a small mouth, or wide mouth and small mouth jar, or regular lids is what they're called. So if you go to buy some, They'll say lids, or they'll say large mouth lids. Where is that thing that says large mouth? <laughs> wide mouth, okay? So you'll get wide mouth lids. This is a box of lids that comes with the rings. You need rings and lids. Basically, all you're doing is taking your vegetable that you're cooking in the jar and sealing it off with this rubberized lid. So vegetable goes in, lid goes on with the rubberized piece in there screw top goes on just like so and that seals it up okay so you'll tighten that down on your food we'll put it in the canner and that's how you can it that's the basic gist of this but you need to know all the stuff that you need you'll need a canning kit a canning kit will come with a canning funnel like this and that funnel just simply drops down into your jar we're going to be canning tomatoes today. I find that a wide mouth jar does better with tomatoes because when you get ready to pour them out and make sauce and stuff like that or spaghetti sauce, whatever it is you're going to do, if you've got a small mouth or a regular lid, you kind of have to shake them out and you take a chance on making a mess. But this funnel is designed to fit either jar, okay? So we'll set all this stuff to the side right here. In your canning kit, and I'll post a link in the video description to a good canning kit. This one's probably on its last leg. I might have to buy myself a new one. These are canning tongs. That's what you use to pick up your jars out of the hot stuff that they're going to be in. And inevitably, they're going to be in hot boiling water. So you want to have a set of canning tongs. You can't pick them up with your hands. You also need this little magnetic stick right here. And I'll show you what it does. It's designed to pick up the lids. Okay, and you'll see why you need this here in just a minute because we have to heat the lids up before we instill them on the tops of our jars. Okay, everything that goes in this jar or in this lid needs to be sterilized as close to sterile as you possibly can get. Now, 
we kind of go a little bit overboard here on the farm with what we do in our sterilization procedure, but you never can be too safe with botulism. And that's why you want to use a pressure canner versus a water bath canner for tomatoes because there's a risk of botulism, okay? You also need a set of teaspoons or measuring spoons. And we're gonna be using one teaspoon of salt per jar of tomatoes. Pretty cool, pretty simple. That's it. We also need a yucky bucket. This is the Stony Ridge Farmer official yucky bucket, and this will have the rotten spots, the cores, and all the skins from these tomatoes. And what we'll do is we'll take them over here in a pot and we'll do what's called blanching. When you blanch the tomato, you dip them in hot water for about 15 to 20 seconds. The water needs to be somewhere between 150 and 170 degrees. Drop them in there. 15, 20 seconds, 10 seconds, however long it takes, and then you'll grab it and you'll make sure that you can just slip the skin right off. Just that simple. So let's get busy. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wash our jars. All these jars are washed very, very clean with soap and water both inside and out. And we'll take them from here and we'll put them into a boiling water bath, okay, for about 10 to 15 minutes. A lot of folks find that this is an unnecessary part of the procedure that I do, but I like to be as clean as I possibly can, and that is absolutely clean. Try not to make a mess, we've gotta be real careful. These have been in for about 15 to 20 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour that hot water out, and we're gonna go ahead, take our jar, and set it over here, and allow it to cool slightly. We wanna keep track of all the jars that we've already sterilized, and these jars will take the fruit. When you go to put your next set of jars in, so we just got five jars out, and we're gonna put two more jars in. One canning is seven jars. That's how many jars that will be held by that pressure canner, okay? So one canning is seven jars, pretty simple. So everything we do is in groups of seven. We're gonna do large mouth jars for all these tomatoes most likely. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna slip in five more and let those start sterilizing. We've got our lids, we have seven lids and we're gonna put our seven lids in a little pot over here that has warm water in it. This pot has water that's about 180 degrees and that's what you really need to do in order to sterilize and or basically pasteurize these products right here. We're gonna take this cooking thermometer. I've got it set at 150 degrees. We're gonna check real quick and we're pretty close to the 160 degree mark right here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start blanching our tomatoes. Blanching a tomato means dipping it in hot water until the skin releases and then we can take it out, cut out the core and drop them right in the jar. So here's what I use, 150 to 170 degree ish water in this pan right here, a pot and I use this. This is kind of a ladle, but what it does is allows the water to fall through. You can also just use a regular old soup ladle if you want to. And I have a noodle strainer. You can have any sort of strainer right here with a pot underneath it. So we'll get this over here fairly close, and this doesn't take very long, so we'll go ahead and drop probably four or five tomatoes right into this nice warm water. Of note, don't put rotten tomatoes. So you can see this guy's starting to get a little rotten. He's going in the yuck bucket. That'll go to chicken feet. Gently, carefully put your tomatoes in. Just let a little bit of the tomato get into the water and then release, just like so. They should start to float once they're blanched. Eventually, it'll get to where the skin, you can just feel that the skin is ready to release. That guy's about ready. The riper your tomatoes, the better off you're gonna be. We ripen all our tomatoes on the counter. It's been about 30 seconds. We'll go ahead and get all these guys out. I'm gonna get your jar in position. So this is super easy, super simple and ergonomic. I'm gonna bring over our tomatoes, freshly blanched. I'll take my knife and I'll cut out the core right down through here and then I'll drop it right into the jar. I'll show you. Core gets cut out over the bucket. You'll see the skin's about ready to peel off. You want a nice, good, sharp knife for this. Now, we'll go over to our jar. We simply just give it a little squeeze, and the tomato drops out, and there's your skin. Let's show you again. So we'll take our paring knife, go right in here, go down about eh, an inch or two, depending on the thickness of your tomato. We're getting that core out right there, and now she's ready. I'll show you real quick. We'll just do it right over the bucket. 
skin just slips right off. If you over blanch, you'll waste flesh on the skin. If you do it perfect, it'll be just right, just like that. And just mash it down into the jar. Don't be scared of it. We're just gonna keep repeating this process over and over and over until we get all seven jars ready to rock and roll. So we've mashed them into the jar. We've got a little bit of head space right here. So basically about an inch of head space. We wanna get one more small tomato and put in there and get her all the way as close to the top as we possibly can. If you overfill, it could cause problems. So do not overfill the jars. Leave at least a half an inch of head space in your jar. And I'll show you what head space is here in a second. See how I'm packing it down in there with my fingers? That's head space right there, okay? Woo! And that's a mess. <laughs> so we want that much head space right there. Next thing you wanna do is take a clean paper towel and wipe around the edge right there. So all the jars are filled. What we're gonna do, and a lot of people take apple cider vinegar, put them on a rag or something and wipe these off, but you really don't have to go to that extent. Inside our little pot right here, we have our lids. What I'm gonna do is wipe down each one. What you wanna do is make sure there are no contaminants on the lid. And while you're wiping them off, you're actually doing uh, a little bit of checks and balances here. You're checking to make sure that your lids are going to seal and that you don't have any chips. We still gotta put our teaspoon of non-iodized salt. That's pickling salt, okay? Pickling salt is non-iodized. I'm told the reason you use a non-iodized salt is because whatever you're canning, it'll make it look nasty. <laughs> Just a teaspoon of salt. And next thing we're gonna do is reach in our little pot right here. We're gonna grab out lids. We're gonna place the lids. Now I've got seven lids in here because I was only gonna do one canning, but I'm gonna do two cannings here back to back. You guys don't need to stick around for both canning, so we'll show you what to do with just the first canning. Now we wanna take and put our rings on. We don't wanna over tighten, just hand tight, not super, super gorilla tight because this has to breathe just a little bit. We will re-tighten once we get them out of the canner. Now you wanna make sure you don't overfill your canner, okay? So it only takes about a quarter of the depth of water right here because the rest of it's gonna have all these jars in it. The water needs to be just a little bit warm, so we're heating up right now. We've got it on high heat, but it's probably only about 110 degrees. If you put your jars into really, really hot water, the bottom will break out. And you need to make sure you've got a pressure canner. There is a little piece of metal down in here to help keep the cans off of the bottom of this pressure canner. All seven are in here. You can see how full we are. It's a little bit fuller than I would like it to be. So we may end up dipping out just a little bit of water. So we have a handy coffee cup. We're gonna put our lid in place. Remember, you wanna inspect a few things on your lid. We're only going with five pounds of pressure. So this smallest one is five pounds. So that's five, that would be 10, and that would be 15. We don't need all that pressure. We just need five pounds of pressure. We also need to make sure that our safety latch is working. That's that. And we also need to inspect our rubber gasket down here and make sure it's good. And I just bought a new rubber gasket for these. This is the replaceable wear item in this machine. Close her down. We want this thing to start jiggling. Once it gets to temperature, it starts jiggling at five pounds. We want to turn it down just a little bit and we want to let it jiggle for five minutes. Now when we talk about it jiggling for five minutes at five pounds, you don't want it going crazy. You just want it and you'll see that here in just a second. That's the perfect little jiggle right there. Five minutes. Look what time it is. We'll shut her off and let the pot cool down. So pretty simple guys. From this point right here, the pot will cool down. You'll take them back out. You'll tighten them back down. You'll just basically take a rag like this, kitchen towel, hold them tight, squeeze them back tight, and that is it. That's all. You can remove the rings after about three days. You wanna keep a tight check on the lids so you can tell what lids have sealed by the sound that they make. If they're sealed, they'll be locked down, okay? They'll be down and you won't be able to do this. You can hear that. You won't be able to do that if it's sealed. So eat that right away, okay? Put that in the fridge and eat it right away. It'll still be good, but eat it right away. Store these in a cool, dry, and dark place, and they'll look 
and taste exactly the same as they do today in five years, guys. So thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm. This is a lot of work, a lot of fun, and an awesome bounty from the garden, guys. This is from 16 tomato plants, all this. And I just picked these today, and I'm picking about 30 pounds of tomatoes per day. Awesome stuff, guys. Thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back. Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here in Sweden. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Hey, Ken, I'm too tall. You need taller tripod or shorter person. Hey, too, still too tall. Earthquake, earthquake. Mmm, moonshine. Just kidding, it's water.